Hello, hello. Hey, so Jesse, Jesse, you are definitely a living legend in this neighborhood and um, and have a lot of history with Tukasa as well. And you've been doing music for, I think, longer than it looks because you don't look old enough to have been doing music for as long as you have. Thank it's you. like, what's your secret? I started when I was 12, so that was the thing. I started really early. I first rehearsed here, I think, when I was 13 years old. And I think the rates are probably similar, almost the same as they were. The room. Well, the room hasn't changed. Yeah, a lot of things are really similar. That's why this is so great that Fucasa continues, and so much in this neighborhood has gone through, you know, what the gentrification or whatever, yeah. and, and to have a place, you know, have Mario here, and you can walk in and go like, all right. For all different periods of my career, I've come here from the beginning when I was in Heart Attack, a hardcore band, to when I was making my first solo record, when I've come here for pre-production. Like, like today is Bruce Springsteen's birthday. Did you know that? Because yeah. I know you have something to do with him, too. Yeah, we saw him play last night in uh, Jersey Giant Stadium. They celebrated his birthday at midnight. Ah. But we didn't bring him here. He's never been to Tucaso as far as I know. But Bad Brains have been here, so that's, yeah. that's just as good. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I had a manager, a guy named Mojo, who was famous or infamous from a Beastie Boys song called Egg Raid on Mojo. And he's like this seven foot big black guy that, uh, you know, he worked at clubs and hung out. And he was the manager of Heart Attack, my band. And, you know, I when mean, you were 12? Yeah, well, 12, 13. We had until I was 16. I was in junior high school in Queens. And if you're into different things out there, you got beat up by people that were into, you know, harder music or, you know, they didn't think. There wasn't an open-mindedness that was like today. It was a real tough time. So I got on the train, I came down here and walked down St. Mark's Place, and by the time I made it to Avenue A, I was a little scared. Each week I'd go a little further east and see if I could live through it. And uh, we hooked up with Mojo, who was working at clubs. He's like, I'll manage you. So the first thing he did was booked us a rehearsal here. And you can, you'd go into bars and drink at any age, so it wasn't like... Uh, it wasn't you, like today. Yeah, so I'd go over to where Bayzax is, you know, where they filmed The Godfather and Crocodile Dundee and all that. We had some beers and we came in here and played. And I remember hearing that Black Flag was, you know, rehearsing here and over at 171A. So he booked us a rehearsal at Tucasa and he booked us a gig at a club called A7. I remember that. I yeah, remember and so that. now A7 is Niagara. Me and my friends had that as a bar for several years. And this place is still here with Mario, so uh, you know it means a lot to me. This room, I think, there's a lot of magic, and it always sounds really great here. It's really big and open, and he always keeps to the community and the mix of stuff that plays here. It's not just you know our rock and roll and punk rock. Mario has you know Latin stuff coming in, reggae bands, jazz stuff, and I think the room opens itself for all of that. It so. does. So if you had a magic wand, which you seem to have in many <laughs> venues and places that you frequent. And save. Well, how would you save Tukasa? Or what do you? What would you recommend for Mario? In how? How? What should he really do to save this place? Well, I think first of letting people know that he needs help, and I think that's what this is doing, getting out so yeah. people come and support the place. So it's booked, and there needs to be more benefits, and people play and reach out to some of the artists that have been here that still haven't been maybe reached yet at this early date. Right. You know, like like the Henry Rollins and the world of the Bad Brains and the people that have come through and and see maybe everybody could do something because, yeah. you know, there ain't a place like this. And no. even in New York, forget our neighborhood, the East Village, which is really, you know, special, but all of like Manhattan, it's become such a, a weird, tough time. And I guess with all the technology, pro tools, and people can plug their guitar into their nail clipper with Hello Kitty and an iPod. Except and Mario and does pro tools a little better than just some yeah. ordinary Yeah, but person. you still want to play in a room and, and be able to beat on drums and be with other human beings and make, you know, be in a band. Or, there's, you can't really do that. And this room has so much character, like. Yeah. So I think people know it about. It. Hopefully, this will get more people aware. And you know, I mean, what are the main issues that are that are being faced that Mario has to? Uh, the rent went up a hundred percent. It went up a hundred percent. Right. Wow. That's the main thing. Yeah. So it's basically that. Yes. And one of, one of the few things besides me getting a haircut. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you did that so you go to court, fight, that. be respectable, personal. <laughs> Exactly. So, um, yeah. Well, everybody is is always happy to see you, Jesse Mel, and you're you are literally like someone in this community that has just like continuously rises, and yeah. and your career just blossoms like in all different directions. You've had tons of opportunity. You've been in how many? I mean, the the first band when you were a kid, then D Generation, now you, and, and now we're doing D Generation again. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I mean, didn't you open for Kiss? Yeah, we did that. We I just remember did that, that uh, tour with Guns N' Roses, which was kind of funny. But I just like playing music. It's, you know, whatever. I mean, you want to 
we've all, I guess, been around in our whole lives. It's something you can't really stop once you get that bug. Exactly. And so it changes, and sometimes you know it's an acoustic guitar, and sometimes it's screaming with you know a couple marshals. And yeah. And Mario says, just turn it down. I'm gonna blow the PA. <laughs> he, he accused me of blowing the PA with an acoustic guitar. And that's the first time I almost blew the system playing folk rock. Uh, <laughs> but I used to put the acoustic through the PA system, and I'm so deaf. I do that too, and he yeah. yells at me all the time. I'm so deaf from all the you know punk rock years. That Eric has to be so loud and come in here, and he look through the glass, and, and I can tell he's doing his work in there. But if the eyes come up over the, the window, I know he's like listening. Could be doing something wrong. So how how what was the last time you practiced here? Um, probably about five six months ago. Cool. You know, something like that. I mean, we've been using some of the basements of the the bars to setting up rooms of our own, but. I, I can tell you what all these things sound like. I know how the acoustic guitar sounds from a mess of boogie with a little <laughs> distortion on yeah. it. But uh, yeah, a lot of pre-production for my records have been in here. Like a lot of these rooms, you know, like, I go in here and I think of the songs in really early stages, songs that eventually got recorded, but what they were like when Sammy Yaffa was playing bass right. on it or whatever. You know. Cool. Well, today <laughs> happens to be National White Chocolate Day. And we would love to share some white it's chocolate white with you. Day. <laughs> well, in this day and age, right? White um, which kind of white powder? Like no, white. I said it's better than white power day. Oh, <laughs> and white I hear white powder. powder. Yeah. White exactly. White powder. But uh, but it is white chocolate day, and um, we would love it if you would share a skeleton from your closet with us. Oh. I'm sure you have at least one. Oh, so I have to eat this or share? You something? have to share it and then you eat it. Okay. Or you can eat it and then share it. Whatever you. Um, okay, what would be a kind of something that happened here? Or it could have happened here, or it could just be some little trouble that you got into one day that your mother doesn't know about, something like that. All right. Well, I know this is trouble. I, I didn't know that they had cops in all the clubs in uh, Texas. In Texas, they have police in the nightclubs, and I had this friend that made me tight pants in the degeneration days, and he would make me uh, get material at First Avenue, Tony Monster, Tony Werewolf. He would make these real tight pants, and... You know, I wanted them to be as tight as possible with these plaid or whatever patterns. So I get on stage in Texas, our first tour, uh, Degeneration, and the guy from Guns N' Roses, Gilby Clark, were on this tour, and I start jumping around doing the moves, and suddenly the pants just split and break, and everything's hanging out. So I just start to go with it and start, you know, make it part of the thing. You're gonna be embarrassed, or you're gonna, you know, let it all hang out. So suddenly my road manager's on the side of the stage with a cop. Apparently the cop went over to him and says, tell your boy to cut the naked shit or you're going to jail. Oh. So I didn't know this guy hands me an overcoat. So like a flasher's overcoat. I had to finish the rest of the show covered up. And then it became a thing of like, can we get naked tonight? And I started to, I guess occasionally play the drums with my penis, uh, a beat on the hi-hat. I've never done it to these drums. <laughs> well, we're not going to tell, right? Yeah, but Green Day found out about this. And we were on tour with D-Generation and Green Day, and they asked me to come up and in the middle of their crowd play a, a drum beat with my penis. So that's something from my closet, but you know, I've shared that too. So. so Janet Jackson needs to take some lessons from you. Yeah, the three-legged drummer award will be given out to Janet Jackson. Or, well, who was she with when they, that? Justin Timberlake. Uh, yeah, okay. That was such an overblown, stupid thing. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Exactly. I'm Costume malfunction, right? I'm getting two of these. I hope they're not spiked with any uh, Tompkins Square magic dust. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll find out later. Exactly. So, any other last shout outs for Tucasa? Or, like, what about you? Like, I know you have Bowery Electric now, and it's uh, what else is going on? Uh, we're working on a Degeneration record, and working on a Jesse Mallon record. I'm going on tour in the UK with Joseph Arthur in the, in the fall. But um, mostly, yeah, it's about Tucasa. I mean, if you don't know this place, if you're a musician in town, support it. We got to get more information out to be able to fight this, you know, raise the rent. I mean, it's crazy. 100% is like insanity. I don't know how they can have control. This is a part of the community. This is an art part of the culture downtown New York. It's not just like some business. It's a place where people grow up and expand and get to create. And, and that's really needed if this is really still a village, as it calls itself. And New York City. Yeah. Like a center of culture. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, let's see, GVs are places like that go. This is one of the last holdouts, and we needed to stay here, so. Yeah, so we'll do everything Fight for in our Yeah, thank you, Casa. Awesome. Thank you, Mario, for all the years and all the support. Yeah, thank you so much. We're going to sign off now and um, just continue saving to Casa. Thanks, to everybody, for this wonderful day, and probably there will be more of them. So, Cynthia, thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Jesse. We'll be, we'll be back one day. Save to Casa.